So in a sense, all of his miracles are actually the suspension <laughs> of the miracle of life that he did create. And mm -hmm. e even in even in death, like if you think about Lazarus, right? I mean, we probably thought about this before, but Lazarus dies and his soul goes to be with God. And if he goes to a paradise, that's great. You know, maybe his body uh, rots somewhere and provides uh, nutrients or other things to grow. You know, that's all. That's all the miracle. But there he is in Abraham's bosom, you know, and Jesus calls him back. And it's like, Lazarus is probably like, why'd you take my miracle away? Like I had made it, you know, this is, this, this is, this was it. But you can pick apart all of Jesus' miracles and, and just, if, if like, if you really think about, about it, realize that the way God has made things is the ordinary ways, like you said, that God ha does do things, those are the real miracles. Welcome to The Color of Dust, a faith and arts podcast with Jack Baumgartner, Seth Wick, and Sam Key. For more episodes or to support the podcast, go to colorofdust.substack.com. Um, it's like eight years old, but it it'll do the trick. So, well, welcome to the color of dust, everyone. I'm Sam, along with Seth and Jack. How are you guys doing this fine? Uh, is it still fall? It is. It it is distinctly fall here in Amarillo. It's okay. raining and cold. cold. Pretty nice. Pretty, nice. <laughs> yeah. Pretty miserable. Pretty nice. If it rains here, I'm happy. It doesn't do it very often. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jack, how's the weather down there? Good. We got a bunch, too. We are we got the same storm that, that, that Seth did, actually. So hmm. it kind of kind of went just in a nice big line. So it was raining in Amarillo the same time it was raining here. And um, so, I, which I like when stuff like that happens. I'm always kind of looking at. I always sneak down and look at see what the weather's doing at Amarillo. I like um, I like hearing I like your updates. updates. I never I never look at a radar. <laughs> radar. Um, it's it's <laughs> funny. It's I'm I'm really it's glad that you do it, and I'm glad that you let me know that you do it because it... <laughs> I I'm it's it's I, it's a little bit of a problem actually, but, <laughs> but I, that's kind of maybe common amongst people that put seeds in the ground. But uh, you just like get a, a text from Jack saying Seth look outside it's raining <laughs> he'll usually ask and see if, I've, if i'm getting some rain yeah i'll ask if he's getting some rain because i usually know at least at least it looks like but sometimes those things can be deceiving i've got a, a really close friend who farms north of me um near salina in a town called gypsum and i'm always watching his place too he's been he's really gotten he's he's missed a lot of rain this year um a lot of rain that we've gotten he's missed and sometimes it looks like he's getting rain and he's, and he's not you know and uh radars can be a little tricky but i, I i'm always i'm always watching it <laughs> i think just, this was the same rain that flooded my basement up in uh chicago prob too probably was you know? yeah it probably was yeah. it was it was definitely angling that way <laughs> yeah um but it's my uh I've got a friend he, who kind of joked that sometimes looking at the weather radars, like kind of like counting, like David counting his armies. So, you know. Wow. <laughs> well, and on that note, uh, I'm going to pray for us. I was really encouraged by Seth's prayers the last couple of episodes. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, made a concise prayer that I have. So, So let's pray together. Holy Father, we believe that you are at work in, with, and under all that you have made. We bless you for the poem that you are writing in our midst, even though we're not always fluent enough in your metaphors to understand it. We ask that you would show us your face in the scripture we are about to discuss. We trust you to be redeeming us and our families and our listeners. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, wow. Sam. That's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
like I said, I was, I was, I was encouraged. So very encouraged. And, and, uh, and those, and your prayers actually have stuck with me through the week. And I, like, I have them in my head, uh, which is a beautiful thing. So there's, there's something, there is something too that I know you're kind of mocking yourself, sort of saying when you read, um, great expectations, was yeah. that it? Yeah. There's the uncle who droned on and on with the long prayers, but there is something about, uh, shorter, e even like yours had meter and rhyme to them. There's something about, they stick with you, right? It's beautiful. It does. Memorable speech. Yeah. <clears throat> so we left off last time. It was a bit of a cliffhanger. Uh, we're in Ruth chapter four. Uh, we left off with verse uh, four or five, I believe. Um, let's see. Okay. So with verse five, uh, and the cliffhanger is... Um, Boaz went to the city gate, got a group of elders together, and started off with his, found the nearest kinsman, Naomi's nearest kinsman, Redeemer, and offered this guy the the best portion, basically, the, the land, which, which would be most appealing to this other guy, and said, you can redeem this land, you're the nearest clansman. And the guy said, yes, I will redeem it. So that's in verse four. Um, when uh, the man answered, I will redeem it. So then we're going to start off in verse five. And then it says, then Boaz said, he adds this on this, this other part. He said, the day that you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, you also acquire Ruth, the Moabite, the widow of the dead, in order to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance. And then the Redeemer said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I impair my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption yourself, for I cannot redeem it. So, I, I liked how we ended last time. I, I think, Jack, you told a story uh, that sort of had us thinking about uh, Ruth as the treasure in the field that uh, that Matthew in Matthew 13 spoke of when he said a man, the kingdom of God is like a man who found a treasure in a field. And when he found it, he hid it, he covered it up. And then he went out, sold everything he had in order to buy that field. And that's kind of like what Boaz is doing. He found, you know, he has this, he has this land that is attached to the clan of Elimelech. And Naomi, Naomi's husband and Limelech died, so did her son. So there's, they needed to find another uh, redeemer for it. And that, and that was going to be Boaz, but there was a nearer one who's able to do it. So Boaz offers him this, him this land, kind of covering up the fact that there is this treasure named Ruth in it. But this other guy didn't quite, doesn't quite seem to think that Ruth is a treasure. In fact, he thinks that she's a liability. And mm -hmm. so once he hears that uh, he'll get Ruth too, he's like, ah, "I'm out. Like I don't want to. I don't want to do it." And probably because he says it was it would um, impair his own inheritance because once he does uh, get um, Ruth as a wife, then. He would have to provide for Ruth. He would have to provide for Naomi at this point, you know, the mother-in-law. Any kids that they had, he would have to provide for. And then uh, the, then the child, the first son of their uh, Ruth and this other guy, would get to all the land and the inheritance. And it would all be in his, this other Elimelech's name. And so this is a huge price to pay. That would threaten that would threaten his existence and his reputation and all of that. And he's like, I'm not willing to do this. And, and that kind of shows the stakes that uh, when I say that Boaz was willing to sell everything he had in order to buy the field, Boaz really was able to uh, make that risk and and spend like that for Naomi. So I'll le I'll leave it there. Kick it back to you guys. See if you have additional thoughts or comments. 
as this story plays out with uh, uh, Boaz kind of pulling the, like, he has a strategy to it. It it struck me a little bit as an echo of just Jacob's, uh, the way Jacob dealt with people, um, where he would, maybe this is less underhanded. Um, in fact, he's going to, it's ending, it's going to end up costing him something, whereas Jacob was usually taking more than um, had been agreed on, or had been assumed to that they had agreed on. Uh, but it just it just struck me as that kind of double strategy. I don't, I don't know. I'm sure there's an echo there on purpose. Yeah, for sure. I don't know what to make of it. There is an emphasis on Ruth the Moabite, the foreigner. Um, Jacob's first it was Leah, then then Rachel. They were mm. um living in a foreign land. We don't know if they were foreigners. Uh, but they were living in a in a in a foreign place uh, as well. Well, I I got the impression I mean I don't know what foreign is in that context, but I I, I had the impression that they were going back like Abram was sending Isaac back to the place of his fathers, right? Yeah. Which would have been Ur of the Chaldeans-ish. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they probably weren't foreigners. They they were at least not of them. Still, 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 you know, rel distant relatives or, you know, I think, I, f I forget what Laban's, there's a definitely a relationship between Laban um, and Abraham, you know, and Isaac. Or, I mean, there's, but I, it's not fresh in my mind, you know. Jacob was referred to as like the, the Aramean, I think. Was that Jacob? I don't know. Well, well in either case, I mean, Ruth here is... She's distantly relative too, right? I mean, she's a foreigner because the nation of Israel is established, but Moab is that's right, the son of Lot. Mm -hmm. um, so, or yeah, that's right, the son of Lot, one of the sons of Lot, grandsons of Lot, um, which would have been back to the Abraham story. Well, one thing that he does do, which I find uh, just interesting, is tying Ruth together with the land. And throughout this, throughout these episodes, we've been tying Ruth together with land. But here it's like she, if you buy, if you take one, you have to take the other. If you have one, you have to have the other. Uh, Ruth is um, linked uh, with with the land and the connections with the barrenness of um the land at the beginning and the barrenness of Ruth at the beginning. And that's part of the other risk that both of the, these guys are taking because Ruth was married for 10 years and she didn't have any kids before her husband died. And so that's like a, that's a big deal that the 10 year of being married and not having kids was the mark that, um, where, um, was it Ava? I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on all these, but uh, Abraham and Sarah were at before, um, before they took drastic actions and you know they got the the Hagar, the concubine. But it was at the ten year mark, so you're supposed to, I guess, feel that um, that is is Ruth is Ruth barren like that? Can can she even have kids? You know that that's part of the risk, part of the risk too. How she's how she's tied to the land, and in and in the Bible, um, kids are always a gift from God. It's they're always meant to be seen as God doing the doing that giving the, giving the kids. I, I don't think I don't think we see that anymore uh, like that. Hmm. It's a I I would be interested to see. Take other ancient literatures 
and see what their if there's themes that develop with the giving of children. I know I've been reading the history of the world to one of my sons, which is uh, it's like a homeschooling. Uh, Susan Weisbauer, History of the World, and it's like I I guess I hadn't put it together, or it's been a while since I had put it together that. All these kings have sons, and all their prophecy is the son's going to kill you. So they all send their kids out. I mean, it's like four or five times in different different cultures. And then, you know, eventually the son eventually grows up and kills them. In this case, though, um, I think you're right. It would be interesting to put this this time, the, when this book was written against other cultures that are... Um, becoming empires and seeing what they do with their stories about children of kings. I don't know. That's a really interesting point because that's what happens with a lot of the 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 gods, you know, like Baal mm -hmm. killed, you know, that was the cycle there, like he killed his father. You know, that was just kind of how things that seemed to be a pattern. That's the one that comes to mind, but I know it's it's a it's that's well if you look at like Zeus, Zeus, you know, and, and Kronos, right? So, yeah. I mean, all, so all these things, it seems to be a, a really sort of strong pattern amongst that, that's, that's pro, you know, on one level, it's, it's a way of looking at, a cycle, you know, and a way of interpreting a cycle. And so it's interesting that we have maybe, maybe we're looking, you know, looking at a contrast and we certainly, with, when we play it out into Christianity, you know, the son of God and the father certainly have a much different relationship, you know, Unless you're a Gnostic, I guess, but, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. but, uh, the, uh, so I, I, yeah, I think that's a very interesting point that it, to me, it kind of goes back to this, um, it's really, it, I think there's a, it's really easy to see things and whether competition is at the root of that which in some level it seems like it is right competition for resources and power and mm -hmm. um you know that there's there's a limited amount of it and so we're we have to compete and if you have a if you have a powerful child then that child is a threat to your to that or something you know Maybe that's over. Maybe that's an oversimplification, um, but I, I think it's it's something that's I think about a lot in the sense of like how we look at the world, and even you know now, and I would use something when we when we look at. It, it, as a you know competition as a lens in the sense of like the way we look at we've always had this idea that everything that everything that grows is on competition you know or everything all all these everything is all of life is in competition so like one thing in your field is in competition with the, the other thing that's growing there right so right. which is why one of the reasons why we you know don't like weeds there's a lot of other reasons now too especially when it comes to like mechanical harvesting and all this other stuff right so weeds there's certainly it plays out in a in that sense but you also it's i think it's also really interesting how the more we learn about um what you know we could use like mycorrhizal fungi and like forests and the fact that, you know, trees of two different species actually share um, a network using mycorrhizal fungi. And so they can actually 
pass carbon and other resources through their roots. And so that even a, a tree that's dying, for example, or at the end of its life, it, it will like offload carbon to other trees, not even of its the same species that wow. it is. So like, that's a really, that's kind of shifts the, that whole competitive thing on its head. There's another really interesting, you know, in regenerative agriculture when they're doing, you know, the, like one of the big things is cover crops. And one of the big things that with cover crops is diversity. And so there's like the more diversity you can have in a cover crop kind of recipe or mix of like all the, you know, however these different species that you're putting together or different varieties of, of crops, you know, legumes and brassicas and grasses, et cetera. Um, that there's the more complex it is, the more benefit that it is. And so, True. which again, it's, it's sort of like, it's in, it's that place that puts a little, itself in a little bit of opposition to that. Yeah. The more competition you know, there is, the yeah, better. Yeah. The more, yeah, these like, well, the resources are limited, right? So, but they did a study, for example, with, they used triticale as the base, um, which is a wheat and rye hybrid. And they would, they would added um, in this study, they, I forget what increments, but they started with say like triticale and three other varieties of like say clover and turnips and, you know, um, like vetch or something, you know? And so, and then, so they did the plot with that and they measured the yield of the triticale and then they would add, they added three more. So then he had six and they added, you know, and so each one and the, the, the yields of the triticale stayed pretty even. And I think they hit like 21 and all of a sudden the yields of the triticale started going up. Really? Which is fascinating. Yeah. Totally counterintuitive. You know? Totally counterintuitive. So I think that um, maybe maybe this is what you're saying, and I'm just slow that you're saying it, but <laughs> that has everything to do with what's happening now in Ruth with this guy seeing Ruth or and her potential seed as competition, mm -hmm. right? Like right. it's gonna it's gonna. He's my translation says I cannot redeem it for myself lest I impair my inheritance. That's kind mm -hmm. of a euphemism. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. a better translation would be less I ruin it or destroy it. And it's actually the same Hebrew word uh, that's behind the sin of Onan, which, you know, we've traced kind of the roots of the sin of Onan spilling his seed on the ground and ruining his mm -hmm. seed. So, you know, it doesn't, mm -hmm. doesn't bear fruit. And that's part of um, where all this curse began with Onan and Tamar. Mm -hmm. um, but here, this guy is the same words of Onan are, are in his mouth, lest mm -hmm. my chances be ruined, you know, spilt, destroyed. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so he has that, I guess that, yeah, that competition, uh, mm -hmm. unhealthy competition mentality. Right. Whereas even in this, even in the whole book, I was thinking about this earlier today. I was trying to think of like a movie or a, a book that I've seen this in somewhere, but this, this whole town of Bethlehem, Basically, they're all from the bigger clan of, um, of Perez. So back to Tamar, you know, Onan spilled a seed. Tamar seduced her father-in-law, Judah, and then they had these two kids, uh, Perez and what was the other one? I'll think of it. But um, so, so Perez, obviously, is from the tribe of Judah, right? Mm -hmm. But Judah's kids then had began their own different clans. So the clan of Perez mostly settled in, in Bethlehem. So in a sense, this this Bethlehem was all under the curse. We talked about the 10 generational curse, right? That they were all a part of it. So that's why I say it's like, I'm trying to picture a, a movie or a book where uh, at the beginning you, you, of the story, you think it just involves like one family or one you know household. But that's by it. the end, you realize that everybody has a stake in the welfare of this one family. And yeah, if, right. and if, and if Elimelech and Naomi can somehow lift this curse, which seems impossible because Elimelech's dead. Right. And, and Ruth's um, husband's dead too. 
um, which it seems impossible, but if they can somehow lift this curse for themselves, then everybody benefits. The whole t the curse for the whole town uh, is lifted. And I think some of that jubilation uh, when it happens comes out towards the end of chapter four when everybody starts celebrating. It's like, okay, this one little family, you know, managed to get married and then have a kid. Why is the whole town celebrating? Why are all the women coming together? And, and you know, we'll get to that. But uh, it, again, the whole town has a stake in it. And yeah, everybody wins. Hmm. Yeah, which is, which is cool. It does it because it says something. It says something about how it, you know how we fear things are versus how things really are. You know, like who, like what's 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 God's true nature? You know, and uh, in that sense of that is that in, a, in which is at the heart of so many things right of that the fear that there's not going to be enough which like is like a zero sum nature of mm -hmm. god where right. there's only... well it's like yeah it's like where is why is which is why you don't follow obey the sabbath of the land because you're not you're afraid that if you don't farm that land you're not going to have enough to eat right, right. um but if you if you have a mindset or a a belief that and that's why it's like that worldview of like it's the whole you realize that we've had this conception that competition underlies everything well it seems when the more we learn we, the, the more we realize that no it's actually it's that's not it's not quite that simple it's not just a bunch of things competing for the same resources you know and so, and I think it's a, it's a, it's, to me, it's like the, nat the natural, everything reveals something about who God is. And when, when we realize that that's not how the world actually is, functions, it, it reveals something about the character of God, you know, to me it does. And that, and so I think it's the same way with this of, that it there's a there's it's hard it's i mean without jump like go going forward in the story you know it's hard to kind of continue the metaphor out i guess but um god makes a way and in a way that is which i think is in a way that's let, in a, that's not miraculous, right? In a way that's foundational to how it, it's it's miraculous. It is. I mean, we've ch talked about this before. Like it, it it is, but it's not in the sense that we want we want we want to see miracles happen, right? It's it's it is. It's it's still because there's that level. Like you know, life is always there's always that. Life is always a miracle, <laughs> and we're even whatever. Uh, so I th I think that it's the 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 sort of like the commonplace humble way that Boaz goes about mm -hmm. doing this thing of of like I'm. Compared to what you know, the the one who's afraid that there's not going to be enough. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm st I'm not getting my words aren't working very well for this. So it's I'll like, let it go for now. Oh, go ahead, Seth. I was just going to say. I mean, the way that Boaz was handling the fields, uh, making sure not only that the the corners were not gleaned, but left over, but specifically even giving more uh, mm -hmm. to Ruth. I. <laughs> He's operating this way, uh, and my, as we've discussed before, his practice is probably seems odd to the other people around, the other farms around. 
um, because he has to keep reminding the foreman, no, leave it for them. Give her extra work. Um, that's be fascinating. <laughs> it's like it's like God's ways and His laws are the miracles. Hmm. Um, we talked about about how yeah the law it because of the law Ruth is provided for you know all this is happening. But I was thinking about like the miracles of Jesus and um, I was like those are almost we were talking about hope and anti hope before. And I was, I thought to myself, you know, Jesus' miracles are almost like anti-miracles. <laughs> like that's when he did those things; those were not the miracles. And all, all of life, all of reality, how he, how God did make things, those are the miracles. Those are the things you want. Like I don't want to, when I go to a body of water, not be able to get in it. You know, <laughs> just to stand on top of it, <laughs> or, you know, I don't want when I go to get a drink for it always to be wine, or. You know, every miracle that he did, like, you would not want that to happen uh, all the time. That that would not be a miracle. So in a sense, all of his miracles are actually the suspension of the miracle of life that he did create. And mm -hmm. e even, in, even in death, like, if you think about Lazarus, right? I mean, we probably thought about this before, but Lazarus dies and his soul goes to be with God. And if he goes to a paradise, that's great. You know, maybe his body um, rots somewhere and provides uh, nutrients for other things to grow. You know, that's all That's all the miracle. But there he is in Abraham's bosom, you know, and Jesus calls him back. And it's like, Lazarus is probably like, why'd you take my miracle away? Like, I had made it, you know? This is, this, this is, this was it. But you can pick apart all of Jesus' miracles and, and just... If, if like if you really think about about it realize that the way god has made things is the ordinary ways like you said that god ha does do things those are the real miracles it's it's like it's it's that kind of like it's miracles it's like it's miracles all the way down <laughs> you know it's turtles all the way down yeah it's the but i, I like how you i like how you've almost like it becomes miracle traditional miracles miracles almost become like a form of chaos yeah. or disorder and it's like we just can't have like water needs to can't just if it wasn't for the the, the miracles the miracle of of the created order so to speak right then water would just randomly be unstable and yeah. be constantly turning into wine wine or yeah. god knows what else blood uh, or yeah, I just uh, want to catch one fish, and now my nets are all broken. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so and they're all wasted everywhere, and nobody can eat them all, and and then there's no more fish left. Or yeah. you know, it's it's kind of the Midas touch That's idea, right. you know, That's right. where it's like That's exactly it. um, it's like I'm starving to death because all my sandwiches keep turning yeah. to gold in my and hand. The real m miracle is being able to hold your child without her dying, yeah. turning into gold. Yeah, that's. I think that's a very, a very um, significant point that you've made. Um, that I really, really like a lot, and I think is inherent to the structure of this story. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's it's so, in a sense, straightforward and not supernatural. That's in right. the way that we look for supernatural things that's right you know it's still like supernatural is everywhere yeah. in it but it's 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 but it's it's the supernatural as you said that's that's in the the actual fabric of everything yeah. and um i love that so much and it's like that's that's what boaz sees right it's like of course there's gonna be enough you know of course she's not gonna be barren yeah. it's just timing yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That kind of thing. It's like uh, there's, there's, no, there seems to be no, there seems to be no. Um, well, it's a form of. I think there's, a, it's kind of like there's a, there's he's wa he's a man. He's walking in freedom. I think you know. There's not. He's not. What? No decision does he ever make in fear. You know that. Well, what if this happens? Like. Like this other guy. Mm -hmm. What if right. I marry Ruth? I'll jeopardize yeah. everything. 
So it's a profound yeah. way to live. It's, you know, when you're just not, he's just not af afraid of, well, if this happens, it'll be okay too. You know, this will be a blessing. If this happens, this will be a blessing. You know, I mean, there's, there's no, um, so it's like, he's, it's, it's a, seeing, having such confidence in the, the miraculous kind of economy of how the world um, maybe could uh, can function when it's uh, I don't know I'm not sure what, what kind of conditions I'm this is I I don't know maybe we've discussed this before but as a as a as a style as a genre uh ruth seems different than much of the old testament even the books that it's sandwiched between um judges and first samuel uh, jack mentioned it a second ago there's like there's no angels that show up there's no prophets that come in and say you know thus saith the lord there are no uh chaotic miracles that we're kind of describing them but in Judges there's a ton of it and in 1 Samuel there's quite a bit um, and this is really just almost a straightforward almost modernly told tale where it's, it's just there's some people they arrive they harvest uh, this guy operates inside the law but that that in itself is I really like the the way you're saying that the law is the miracle here um, this is I hadn't really considered it as a as the style or the point of view that it's written from being well, it's, a it, significant it's, structure. To me, it, it reads closest to the book of Job, mm. but it's the other side. Right. Uh, yeah, the it's book a good of Job point. is God, you getting a glimpse into his um, divine, uh, invisible spiritual beings at mm. work and how, you know, they interface with the world and that. But here it's the other side. It's it's still God at work, but through his human agents. It's and it's basically the same it's basically the same story. There's a family at the beginning, they lose everything, and then by the end they're redeemed. And and even in the end of Job, he has um I think it's it's either seven boys at the end and three girls or three girls and seven boys, but it totals ten. Seven and singing it, sons and dancing daughters, three. Okay. And, okay. So, but that totals 10. And at the end of Ruth here, we have, you know, 10 names listed that come from this union. So, and, and the rest are in, and not only being empty, but then her being filled and restored. So it's, it's very similar to Job, but the, the, nor, the, the normal the normal miraculous earthly view of things rather than uh, kind of God's perspective from, from Job, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I, that's a really, I love that um, juxtaposition. And I think it, it kind of, it, it answer to me, I think it's answers something really important because too, and the jet, because on one hand you have like, right. You have the, they're both righteous men who, mm -hmm. who kind of have a role at the city gates, that kind of thing, yep. and they're respected. And we're seeing Boaz where it's, you know, really kind of all going well. Um, and we're, you know, with Job, it's obviously the focus is not on where it's going well, but on when, like, the the wheels come off in a very tragic and bizarre way and, and he complains um, like naomi complains naomi saying god you did this to me mm -hmm. i call yeah. me bitter all of that yeah. and joe mm -hmm. overlaps with her yeah. in that way right and i but i think what's what's fascinating about i guess it's that when you see if i i don't know if i'm going to be able to weave this at all so this may be a train wreck i apologize beforehand if it is um like, so it's interesting 
with miracle the miracles that so often like well with like judges it's like the constant refrain is everyone there was no king and everybody did what was right in their own eyes right so it's kind of like so here's and and so there's all kinds of chaos you know our word for miracles this episode <laughs> there's all kinds of chaos <laughs> yeah. um because there's so because there's because it's there's a departure from um i'm going to say freedom mm -hmm. i'm going to use that word there's a departure from freedom um like the freedom that 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 boaz has has is showing us right mm -hmm. so so uh, um so you would be tempted to think that everyone doing what's right in their own eyes is is a is the freedom you know but when you read what that plays out as it's not it's it's not people living freely it's people you know it's it's all it's all kinds of react fear and reactionary kind of like um um decapitations and whatnot so <laughs> or dismemberments and you know all kinds of really happy um I guess my what I, the what I, so I'm just trying to that contrast of I think it's interesting that we so often see miracles as a sign of of favor you know in our modern thing of like well um that when that intervention and I'm certainly not disputing that view but I also think that we the maybe it's more problematic when we see the we see the the lack of a miracle as or the lack of what we want to define as a miracle mm -hmm. you know a a, a a a big intervention in a supernatural way as not favor you know and you 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 sometimes so i guess it's that you contrast in a sense, there's not a need for, for that, in, in Ruth, because you have, you have, um, the characters are not just Boaz, but all all of them are, you know, making these decisions or living in a free way, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, Ruth is the same way. She's not making decisions based out of fear you know she's making decisions based off of some other principle mm -hmm. of that like in the sense of like we could say like there will be enough versus there won't be enough mm -hmm. you know like so she, she's living hesed uh, god's love she's mm -hmm. uh, god's faithfulness mercy that, that's She's tied with Hesed a lot, you know. That's that's that word, and that like like creates the highway for mm -hmm. you know the quote unquote miracles or life to uh, to to flow down easiest. So I like what you said that when you're living in that way, then the the fruit of that is the miracle, you know, the uh, mm -hmm. fruit of those decisions. Yeah. So, so it's 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 interesting. I guess it's just interesting that to see it in that. Or to think about it, at least in that perspective, and then to have Job, where it's, in a sense, it's like there's an extreme supernatural intervention, you know, because he's, you know, and not to go so deep into too deep into Job, but it's, I think that because it's tempting to say like, well, if, if you just if you live this way everything's going to be fine is you know i mean i know there's those those promises right but it's that's i think with i guess it's in a sense that again I, like i said this might be a, i'm not sure how to i'm not sure how to weave weave the the thoughts together but i i think it's 
I, I guess for me personally, I like having the, the, the antidote of Job to, to attach to Ruth, sure. to that story, because, because it's just, it doesn't always go like it goes in Ruth, you know? Um, and I, and I like that in a sense that even Job's view of God ultimately was like too small, right? And so in a sense of maybe we're looking at it, maybe it's it's in that sense that maybe that's even a, a way that We could say, like, with Boaz, he his at least in this story at this time, his view of God was not too small, yeah. and the in these things happened, you know. And I I don't I guess where I I keep getting hung up is I I I don't like the language of I don't feel like there's this cause and effect of that I that I struggle with sometimes of like, well, if you do this, then God's going to bless you, you know. Because Job seems to fly in the face of that. And so there's something, there's something bigger, you know, it's not, we, it's in this, maybe it's in the sense of like, we don't always get to judge what God's blessing even looks like, yeah. you know, in the yeah. case of Boaz, it looks like having children and this thing, you know, these things happening and, and ultimately like there's kind of the traditional view of what blessing looks like that job ultimately gets restored to but he gets restored to it only only after like the limitations had been annihilated that 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 made that the only form of god's blessing you know because the the biggest form of god's blessing is god himself which is something that will destroy i mean that's like over overwhelming to the the natural order you know in a sense of like that so does, does, does that make sense what i'm trying to say there i'm not doing a very good job with it but um because i i think it's uh, all surrounding boaz is hard stuff and still the context that Ruth came out of was, was hard. Yeah. And there's going to be hard, like, yeah. And there's going to be hard stuff later. So it's like, it's good to have that story and to be able to celebrate it. Remember, like it's going to, you know, it can be like this. Um, so when it's not like that, it's the Shire in the middle of, yeah. You know, it's it, yeah. That's reminding. good. Remember, as they're climbing into Mordor, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I it, that there's I like the uh, well there's the other there's the other part of Lord of the Rings uh, that's very famous. Like, why does this have to happen to us? And you know, Gandalf says, and nobody gets to choose the time. It's I can't remember the quote. I should really, that's one you should just have at the tip of your tongue. I'm sure you yes. have it. Jack, do you have it? Well, it's the, it's the tough thing is like the, the, the movie is kind of a little different than yeah. the book and how, and what Gandalf says, you know, so depending on like if, if, a, if the movie or the book is more fresh in my mind, um, but it's kind of like, I think it's, it, you know, it's kind of the, what, what you do with the time that you have kind of thing. But I yeah. think the, it's the, the important, it's that, I think it is a beautiful thing in that story that surfaces multiple times is that freedom isn't to be immune to pain or duty or responsibility or all these things freedom is like how you freedom is actually found in like how you kind of respond 
um, you know, which is Frodo and Sam are kind of really beautiful pictures of that for sure. And that, that, that responding in this, that kind of a self-sacrificial way. Um, and I think sometimes we may be in Job's time or a Limelech's time, right? Or the famine hits and our sons die and I die and I leave widows. Mm -hmm. Or we live in Boaz's time. Either way, you have, like Jack said, I like the I like your use of freedom there. You know, the freedom is actually kind of a a, a restraint. I think when I think about stuff like that, I always, for me, it's like, do, is God only good when things are good? Right. You know, like I, I, not to me, it's like the freedom I want to have is to, for God to still be good when, when things, when things, circumstances aren't good, Yeah. you know, and that like, that my view of God is big and is big enough that, that I'm not going to make it, that I'm not only can make a judgment about who God is based off of, um, what I'm, what I'm facing, you know, or terrible, you know, all it's, and so it's kind of like seeing, seeing that be up past that I, to, to the, that foundational goodness, you know? And I think that is something that, again, you see that in you know, the Lord of the Rings is really good about that. It's like the, there's the goodness is, um, is pre, in a sense, is preeminent and even though. You, you know, even under threat, you know, that, um, and how it's, how, how goodness is engaged in, in a time of like great darkness and turmoil and, and fear. And, uh, and so it's kind of, and that it's not an easy choice, even like that. It's not, not even an easy choice. And I, and I think that even some of, to get back to Ruth, that it even, may, it makes me wonder like, oh, is how is Ruth, pre is it presented as an easy choice, you know, for Boaz? Um, I mean, maybe it's, it's easy because he's made it his way of life, you know, and uh, Ru Ruth it was, you know, obvious, you know, there's, we see the struggle more with Ruth because if we see what she went through and there's that, you know, a lot of that early kind of wrestling and, you know, we see all the pain. Yeah. With Naomi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Naomi and Ruth both, you know, they yeah. both lost husbands and both, you know, so they're both in this place of, of great, you know, of difficulty and, and, and even, there, it, you know, and even despair, but even in the despair that, that Naomi exhibits, you know, there's still, there's still enough momentum, <laughs> you yeah. know? Uh, so I, I don't know. I'm not, I, it's, it's, it's resists making a clean package of it, you know? And I'm, that's I'm good. picking up on the, um, um, how God, we talk about God's goodness and that, how, how he affirms his goodness in the book of Job, talking about the, uh, um, the book of Job again, but mm -hmm. when God wants to, and I see a link between Job and Boaz, they, they're kind of acting in the same way. Boaz, as we uh -huh. noted, his name means the pillar, like the mighty pillar. Uh -huh. uh, he fulfills the law. But when God wants to affirm his goodness in Job, what does he do? He talks about how he himself, God himself, fulfills a law every day, the laws of nature, and how he brings the stars out and he feeds the animals and he lays the foundations of the earth. And, you know, a few few chapters about how God, um, I guess, gives that 
hope and freedom to them mm -hmm. by saying the miracles that he does. Speaking of mi miracles as ordinary na natural things that we observe, God says, I I'm, I'm doing all those things. And, and, and through what has been made, uh, you can see uh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. um, so God's God fulfills his law, you know, to us and, and, and Boaz kind of is that mighty happy pillar fulfilling the law, uh, just the same in people's lives. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I am thinking of a, a quote and okay. I'm trying to find it and see, and feel, see if it's as relevant as I, I like that. I like the Shire that you brought up, Seth. Um, yeah, because it does feel like Bethlehem is, you know, kind of the Shire. Well, and it's especially directly following judges, which is just... Oh, yeah, yeah. Gruesome over and over and over for generations. Then you had this moment of peace. Yeah. Um, hmm. But it's being threatened too by things going on you know, around. Hmm. Yeah, I also think as a, culture, as a culture, it's probably good to have those have those, those stories, stories like Ruth, like Ruth. Um, to get you through the despair. Right. Uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah, I mean it's it's the there is an a there is a. It's a technology, I guess, you know, I look at my own life and it's, and I have a rich catalog of stories of, of, of God's faithfulness in difficult circumstances, you know, whether it's, you know, and, and so I can like, all of that is, all of that is functions to, to, I can review those and and when I'm in a in a place where it feels like I'm alone or like that, well, how's this? How are we going to make this work? You know, we don't have how you know we can't pay further. We're at, whether it's financial or 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 other or emotional or, or what or anything, and so having that having those stories always in my mind um, of of God's faithfulness is in my just in my own journey is has is always something that I'm that f it all if it functions that way like it allows me to see what I don't see yet you know it it and and so, or to know that that, so it's, it can work that way. I guess I keep getting hung up on this thing. Like, it's like, what, you know, it's like Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego and they're, it's like, they know that God could save them, but there's still this posture of the, but even if he doesn't, you know, it's, God, it's we're still not gonna yeah. we're still not gonna worship the 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 idol that you set up so i that's the tension i keep feeling that i'm struggling with this whole conversation is that uh that what I, and why like with the thing with god's goodness it's even if even if i even if even if job's story ended differently without him being restored, God would still be good. Um, and even, even if I don't see, even if I'm living in a time of exile and I don't see the restoration, God is still good. Cause it's like, um, I, that's the freedom I, des I desire to like stand in you know sure. like why, why do you think that books like job which go on on much longer and then ruth 
the the main the the main drama is this the the hard stuff, the tension, and only at the very end of Job does do things get reversed and restored. Like, you know, it switches for a little bit, and same with Ruth. You know, there's all the chapters of drama, and then right at the end, you know, the the good thing happens. So, like the majority, or even in the Gospels, the majority majority of it is struggle and uncertainty. And only at the end do you get this little blip of hope and then the story's over. Like why why construct stories like that? It, do you think do you think God is trying to tell us that, hey, make sure that you realize and the main focus is uh be faithful to me, I'm good no matter what, no matter how t- tough your struggle is. Mm-hmm. And maybe there could be a good thing that happens at the end, you know, maybe not. Uh, versus a story that maybe is is the reverse has a little bit of struggle followed by uh, all the good stuff. Why do you think um, some of these great stories are constructed like that? Because I, because it makes them seem like got it makes it seem like no, you're you're not supposed to think that if you behave a certain way, you get rewarded. Because in mm-hmm. fact, it's the reward appears as just a tag on at the end. Yeah, that's a good question. It's, I mean, it's again, you can look at the 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 Hobbits, the the Lord of the Rings, and the the always the most enjoyable part of that book for me is the the Shire, and then Tom Bombadil's. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because that's my but favorite. They that's but they the don't best. last. But they don't last for very long. Yeah, and if the and if the whole and if it was just that. It would probably get boring pretty fast, too. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to live there; it's another thing to read about it. <laughs> you know, it's kind of, but that's the, but that's, I, uh, you know, that that's in a sense, like, in a sense, that's the stuff of nonfiction, though. You know, when you get into like that's like farming manuals and and um. So then you're like there all the time, but you're learning how to like do it, you know? So you're reading your, you know, agricult- agricultural treatises and, you know, it's, it's, so it's not a, then it's not a story, it's something else, right? Um, I don't know if that, that, that rings at all, but, uh, uh which I, I, I don't get bored reading that stuff. Uh, I just I just read that stuff, and then I can only read it for so long before I have to go outside and, you know, farm. Uh, but when I think a story, I think it's in a sense it's the way. The garden, of, um, I mean, we were only in the garden for like one, one or two verses. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and it's it's I think it's again it's like there's a pattern, there's a cycle of what is our life like. You know, do I you. You get into interesting territory when you think, oh, when you even you think about how you raise your children. You know, in a sense, a sto- good story has to reflect, in a sense, a little bit of how you raise your children, because if you just make it easy for them, they're they're just gonna be boring toads. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's, but if you if you introduce if you pre- introduce or prepare them for, for th- you know, because you could, depends on how you want to call, you know, there's just that, I mean, it's uh, our job as parents is, is to provide resources and then take them away. You know, it's like, just, I, I think about it when with, so I, I think the stories reflect that in a sense of like, I'm going to help you build you know, I'm going to help you build a table when you're little, you know, I'm going to do, I'll, I'll cut everything. I'll, you know, well, I'm helping you the whole process and the older they get, it's like, no, you do this part yourself. 
you know, I'm only going to do, no, you can do this. And there's, it's always like a foot dragging. You're like, no, I need you to do it. I can't do it. There's no, I can't do it. It's too hard. And it's like, sorry. And, and then they do it, realize they can do it, you know, or, or sometimes it's like, I can do this. And I'm like, nah, you're not ready for this yet. <laughs> like, and like my little, my little girl yesterday, we were butchering chickens actually. And she was like, I want to help. I want to help. She's, you know, six years old. And by the end she was cutting, cutting all the the feet off. You know, her job was she was cutting the legs off the chickens, you know? And so right at that joint and she, I was showed her how to find the joint and cut through it. And so there she is just shoot, cutting them. You know, it's just like, I'm really good at this, <laughs> you know, and I had my oldest son was that way with, you know, but whatever that's, I guess what I'm saying is there's, you have to take your help away to, for them. And, 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 and it, and for them, it really feels like suffering <laughs> when you're not helping them and not fixing everything for them. And, and it gets, you know, the, obviously the older they get, the more fraught it can get and, and more scary it gets for us too, because then you like turn them out into the world with a car or other human beings. And, and so like, there's not like the control goes away. So I think it's, and it's, it makes me, it just seems to reflect like how we actually have to live in a sense. Kierkegaard uses the analogy of a mom teaching her uh, kid to walk. You know, you can't ho hold them up forever. You have to let them go and mm -hmm. risk them falling yeah. for them to be able to walk. All right. I think that's, uh, that's a good place to uh, end for today. Can, can I just, just do yes. you have any thoughts on that, Seth, on any of that? I, I feel like, or maybe we can retouch on it at the beginning of, our next episode. I just feel like that you would have your literature person. So I bet he has a poem. His uh, microphone got shut off. Yeah. We can revisit for the next episode. It may be a good okay. place to pick up. Okay. And now may you see the beacon fire rising before you and may you have the courage to light your own fire. And may it burn a hearty flame, no matter the storms and the battles without, or the doubts and the traitors within. And may others see your burning witness, so that they are inspired to light their own fires. And may we all receive the outcome of our faith, the light of the knowledge and glory of God in the face of Christ. Thank you for listening to The Color of Dust. Please rate and review us on your favorite podcasting platform. And be sure to share this episode. Our music is written and produced by Jack Baumgartner. To learn more about us, go to colorofdust.substack.com.